President Obama meets with French President Francois Hollande for the first time since the Paris terror attacks 11 days ago. Catherine Zeltner has more on today's meeting from the White House. Catherine. Wyatt, President Hollande's visit is part of a diplomatic push for the U.S. to bolster its campaign to destroy ISIS. The French president planned to urge Obama to work with Russia to fight the extremists, but Hollande's mission quickly became entangled with the fallout from a Russian military plane being downed by Turkey. In their first face-to-face -face since the Paris terror attack. So when tragedy struck that evening, our hearts broke too. President Obama tells Francois Hollande the U.S. stands with France. Obama says he'll intensify the U.S.-led campaign against ISIS. The extremist group killed 130 people and injured hundreds more in France less than two weeks ago. But the question is, how would a coalition with Russia work? Today, Turkey shot down a Russian warplane, claiming it violated Turkish airspace and ignored repeated warnings. Russia denies its warplane crossed the Syrian border into Turkish airspace. Russian President Vladimir Putin calling it a stab in the back by terrorists. The French president wants Russia to join the coalition to fight ISIS. But today, Obama says the downed warplane underlines major concerns. I do think that this points to uh, a ongoing problem with the Russian operations. The U.S. is skeptical of Putin's motives, given his long-standing support for Syrian President Bashar Assad. Obama says Russia would be enormously helpful in the fight against ISIS, but the nation needs to change its military priorities. We hope that they uh, refocus their attention on what is uh, the most substantial threat. The U.S. and NATO say the Russian warplane was in Turkish airspace. Obama calls Russia the outlier in the global coalition to fight ISIS. President Hollande meets with Russian President Vladimir Putin later this week. Wyatt. Catherine Zeltner reporting from the White House. Thanks very much. The mastermind behind the Paris attacks planned to carry out another suicide bombing days later. That according to the Paris prosecutor. Meanwhile, France's interior minister says 124 people have been charged in connection to the killings. This is the first time authorities have announced any charges related to the attacks. We welcome in Claire Lopez with the Center for Security Policy. She focuses on the Middle East, national defense, and counterterrorism. Before that, she was with the CIA for 20 years. Claire, the president says the U.S. will intensify its campaign against ISIS, but he's also said that there's no ground troops. So what do you expect him to do? I would hope that the president uh, goes on the side of caution. Um, the illustration of that morass that's over there right now is the shooting down of this Russian plane today by the Turkish forces. Um, this is a complicated mess in which the United States' role really should be to help our allies, number one, Israel, also Jordan, and I would say the Kurds. But as for the rest of it, it is a mishmash of competing ethnicities, sectarian religious groups, tribes, and who knows what else. The U.S. really has no place there. And it's really tough as well when you get France involved now because France is also carrying out airstrikes. What do you think is their military strategy? Well, sure, because uh, Francois Hollande, the president of France, the French uh, authorities, uh, charge the Islamic State with responsibility for the attacks in Paris. But the truth of the matter is that the actual threat to all of our countries, including France, other parts of Western Europe and the United States, really comes from within. Those countries and we also have populations of Muslims living in our country already, some small percentage of which is already drawn to answer the call of their faith to jihad. That is the problem. It is not Raqqa. We can bomb Raqqa into the ground, and this problem would still exist among us. You mentioned the U.S. working with its allies. Do you think there will be any immediate fruits from the French president meeting with President Obama today? I do expect that there will be um, more cooperation together with France um, and uh, a strengthening of, of the intelligence sharing relationship, perhaps, between our two countries. Um, but I would not expect the United States to get involved in terms of ground troops, nor would I expect France to do that either. Do you think that the U.S. could ever realistically work with Russia to effectively fight ISIS? Well, I don't think that Russia, first of all, is actually over there to fight ISIS. The reason that Russia is over there right now is to uh, prop up the regime of Bashar al-Assad and the Baghdad, Beirut, Damascus, Tehran axis. It's not to fight ISIS. 
and indeed the majority of targets that the Russians had been striking previously were not ISIS targets. They were uh, targets of, of other rebel militia groups, and there's a huge number of those uh, in, in the uh, former Syrian territory. Last question really quickly. What do you think about the Syrian refugee crisis? Some people have said we should close our borders to them. What do you think? I think we do need to hit the pause button in terms of refugee resettlement, but also all of our immigration programs need a reassessment at this time because we are talking about accepting people from war zones where we know that the ideology of jihad and sharia is powerful. And even if the individual people coming over might not appear on any kind of watch lists or terror lists, or themselves be connected to any terror group, if they harbor sympathies for the jihad and, and Sharia ideology, that is a problem for us. We need to hit the pause button. Like you said, this is a very complicated situation and one that I know a number of these countries are going to be dealing with, of course, for years to come. So, Claire Lopez for the Center of Security Policy, thanks so much for your insight today. Thank you.